scientific worlds left to conquer. W. Ross Ashby. What is mind? Theories of mind. Hmm. Model of the universe. When we can control how we model the universe inside ourselves, we are able to vary the parameters satisfactorily. Our self may reflect this ability by changing appropriately to match the new property. The quality of our model of the universe is measured by how well it matches the real universe. There is no guarantee that our current model does match the reality. No matter how certain we feel about the high quality of the match, feelings of awe, reverence, sacredness, certainty are also adaptable meta programs which can attach to any model, not just the best fitting one. In the province of the mind, what one believes to be true is true or becomes true. Hmm. We can conceive of other supra self meta programs farther out than these, such as in Olaf Stapleton's The Star Maker. Here the self joins other selves, touring the reaches of past and future time and of space everywhere. The planet wide consciousness joins into solar systems consciousness into galaxy wide consciousness. Intergalactic sharing of consciousness fused into the mind of the universe finally faces its creator, the star maker. The universe's mind realizes that its creator knows its imperfections and will tear it down to start over, creating a more perfect universe. No limits. When we use our biocomputer in this manner, we discover profound truths about ourselves and our capabilities. The resulting states of being of consciousness teaches us basic truths about our equipment. Consensus science. There's another kind of information in the network of bodies, which includes our connection with others for bodily survival, procreation, and creation. So far, we have information without limits in one's mind and with agreed upon limits, possibly unnecessary in a network of minds. We also have information within defined, no, within definite limits within one's body and in a network of bodies on a planet. Philosophical puzzles. With this formulation, our scientific problem can be stated very succinctly. Given a single body and a single mind that is physically isolated and confined in a completely controlled environment in true solitude, such as when in the isolation tank or other void space, can we satisfactorily account for all inputs and all outputs to and from this mind? Can the mind be truly isolated and confined Given the properties of the software, the mind of the biocomputer, can we find, discover, or invent inputs and outputs not yet in our consensus science? Does this center of consciousness receive and transmit information by some form of unknown modes of communication? Or does this center of consciousness stay within the isolated biocomputer? In the quiet center, I pose the question of whether the mind is contained so that what we experience, no matter how far out, is actually created within the mind versus the possibility that the mind is unlimited and boundless so that far out experiences are actually really occurring in some other reality or universe. Such questions are unanswerable in our current reality, or at least we cannot answer them with our current scientific tools. 
The pondering is illuminating nonetheless. If for no other reason than that it leads us to new unanswerable questions about our essential nature. So this work is the result of several years of personal effort at understanding the various paradoxes of the mind and the brain and their rela relationships. The basic premises presented in this work may help resolve some of the philosophical and theoretical difficulties which arise when we use other viewpoints and their basic beliefs. Some of the major philosophical puzzles are concerned with existence of self, with the relation of the self to the brain, the self to the mind, and the self to other minds, as well as the existence or non-existence of an immortal part of the self, and the creation of and the beliefs in various powerful fantasies in these areas of thought. We human beings have a basic need for imagining wish fulfillments. Our wishful thinking becomes interwoven among our best science and our best philosophy. We need certain kinds of ideals for the intellectual and emotional advancement of each of us. We also need ways of thinking which look at straight which look as straight at the inner realities as at the physical, chemical, biological, outer realities. We need truly objective philosophical analysis inside ourselves as well as outside ourselves. This work is a summary of my efforts to attain objectivity and impartiality with respect to these innermost realities. We might as we might well ask, where is such theory applicable? Oh, still running? Yeah. Once mastered, it may be directly applied in self-analysis. If we remember that self is a feedback cause with other human beings, we can start at this personal end of the system and achieve beginnings of interhuman analysis by analy analyzing ourselves first. If successful, we may see ourselves operating in improved fashions with other people, as judged by ourselves and much later as judged by others. The reflections of our intellectual and emotional growth may be seen when operating in our interhuman transactions with one's spouse, children, relatives, colleagues, and professional and business contacts. General scientists needed. The person who can understand and absorb this kind of theory needs need understand over a broad intellectual and emotional front. They need understanding and training in depth of multiple fields of human endeavor. General scientists can probably understand it best. The scientist to whom I have presented this theory evidenced an immediate understanding and an immediate grasping of the basic fundamentals in consequence of the theory. A second group who have no difficulty with the computer aspects of the theory but who may have difficulty with the subjective aspects is that large group of young people have become immersed in computer use and programming. A few of this group may have the necessary biological and psychoanalytic background to understand this view. Additional training in self-analysis itself may be given to these few. Classically trained psychoanalytic scientists may find this theory useful with further study of computer programming aspects. Okay. For purposes of this discussion, a general scientist is a person trained in the scientific method and trained in watching one's own mind operate. 
in correcting one's scientific as well as philosophical and pragmatic errors as a result of such observations. In a sense, general scientists who are willing to study more than just one narrow specialty in an attempt to grasp as much knowledge as they can under the circumstances from other fields than their own. General scientists